So we've just started 2024. Happy New Year, guys. I was doing some reading today and it became really clear to me. If you're not doing carnivore, you should be. And there are some really good reasons you should be on carnivore. One of the top reasons is for your health. You're going to lose weight. You're going to potentially reverse your diabetes. You're going to feel better. You're going to get rid of that joint pain. You're going to get more energy. You're not going to have the brain fog that you do now. You're not going to have that fuzzy feeling all the time. You're going to be much more directed with your energy and you're going to be much more on the go and ready to take on challenges just by changing the way you eat, just by going carnivore. But there are some other reasons as well, which I'm going to talk about in this video. Now, I was on the Washington Post uh, website today and I read an article and this is an article that I want to go through with you. I think this is a perfect advertisement for why you should be doing carnivore in 2024. The title of this article is Look for these nine red flags to identify food that is ultra processed. All right, so there's nine red flags here. All right, so we're going to go through these red flags one by one. All right. So uh, red flag number one, more than three ingredients. Many ultra processed foods have long lists of ingredients that can sound like a high school chemistry experiment. Very true. So what I would be doing actually is keep it simple. I would uh, avoid the uh, foods that have uh, even three ingredients, okay? I would just go for foods that have no more than one ingredient, that being stuff like eggs, steak, pork, chicken, fish, scallops, prawns, things like that. Or shrimp, I guess, uh, I guess half of my audience would probably say rather than prawns. Anyway, um, the point is, the point is that, uh, you know, don't you come the raw prawn with me. The point is that if we go more than one ingredient, we're starting to complicate things, right? It makes it more difficult for you. It's uh, difficult to stay on track and you're always worried about am I eating the right thing so it goes on to explain if you like bread for instance choose a brand that contains only simple ingredients such as wheat flour barley flour sourdough starter salt nuts or raisins the only thing in here that I um, could ever see myself wanting to put in my mouth again is salt um, everything else is going to have an effect on your blood sugar which is less than uh, less than ideal and so stick to your one ingredient foods again if you're doing carnivore real simple you don't have to worry about ingredients don't have to worry about how how many ingredients has this got just go give me the steak give me the eggs whatever it is put the salt on it that's it i'm done very very simple and oh we've got a comment here from the th chan school at harvard uh, the School of Public Health. You can still buy the foods you want, says Stephen DeVries, an adjunct associate professor of nutrition at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Well, your credibility is completely out the window now, buddy. And the executive director of the educational nonprofit Gaples Institute, whatever that is. I have to check for Gaples at some point. But you should find the least altered version of these foods with the fewest ingredients possible. Yes. Um, for example, steak, eggs, pork, chicken, etc. Okay, let's go to point two. Thickness stabilizes and emulsifies. Look for ingredients such as soy, le I don't know how to pronounce this. Soy, blah, blah, guar gum, xanthan gum, and my favorite of all time, carboxymethylcellulose. I love that stuff. It's awesome. Um, okay, so... Um, if you've got ingredients, basically, if you've got ingredients in something that you can't pronounce, then you probably shouldn't be putting it in your body. But let's go back to point one again. If you don't get things that have more than one ingredient in them, you don't have to worry about all this kind of stuff. It's very, very simple. Carnivore is very, very simple and very, very easy to do. Okay, number three, added sugars and sweeteners. No, we don't want to do that. Try to avoid foods with corn syrup, cane sugar, malt syrup, or molasses on the label. If you want extra sweetness, add your own sugar or honey. 
Mm. Most people would add less honey or sugar than you will find in the packaged version, said DeVries. Mr. DeVries, do you know most people? Most people are not going to add less. Most people are going to add significantly more, I would, I would hazard a guess. That's much healthier than relying on the yogurt company to determine how much sugar or honey or additives you should eat. I mean, I agree with that statement. We shouldn't be allowing the yogurt company to determine what goes in our food. But then we shouldn't be adding honey and sugar and all that kind of garbage to our food either. Keep it simple. Just go with one ingredient foods. Done. Job's done. Job's solved. We're healthier. Everyone wins except the food companies. Oh, no. Oh, maybe the pharmaceutical companies don't win either. <sighs> Too bad. Okay. Ingredients that end, number four. Ingredients that end in O's. Examine the label for sucrose, maltose, dextrose, fructose, glucose, and uh, what was the other one? Carboxymethyl uh, cellulose. Um yeah, don't go for the oses. The oses are not good. But another another point that you might want to be reminded of, one ingredient foods don't contain any oses. So beef doesn't have an os. Eggs don't have oses. Pork doesn't have oses. You know, none of those things. Um, of course, one ingredient foods, once you get to the fruit... We've got some osas in there, but we don't want to go near those necessarily. We want to stick to the nice animal products. Okay, stick to your carnivore products, guys. 2024 carnivore. Okay, number five, artificial effects sugars. Look for aspartame, sucralose, um, <laughs> unpronounceable words, saccharin or stevia. Uh, sweeteners and artificial flavors are another hallmark of ultra-processed foods. The package is a hallmark of ultra-processed foods. The color of the package is a hallmark of ultra-processed foods. The length of the nutrition label is a hallmark of ultra-processed foods. Okay. Uh, and so many store-bought English muffins, for instance, contain an array of emulsifiers, preservatives, and sweeteners. But you wouldn't know that unless you looked at the ingredients. Well, you know, the fact that it's shelf-stable for 160 years would give me a tip. Okay, number six, health claims. Ultra-processed foods often have buzzy marketing claims on their packages. Many products that are marketed as nutritious are actually laden with sweeteners and other additives. Really? These products include breakfast cereals, granola-flavored yogurt, snack bars, salad dressings, and canned soups. Hang on a sec. Are you trying to tell me that breakfast cereals are not good for me? Okay. So, yeah, don't go for the buzzy marketing claims. You know what doesn't have buzzy marketing claims? Steak. There's nothing on the package that says, you know, this is going to do this for your health or do that for your health. But it's nutritious. It's very, very nutritious. Okay, number seven, low sugar promises. Does the label say that the product is low in added sugar? That can be a red flag because manufacturers often replace the added sugar in their products with artificial sweeteners. You know what's not sweetened? Eggs, steak, pork, chicken. Okay, I think you get the hint. Okay, uh, number eight, instant and flavored varieties. When it's instant, it's usually mechanically altered in a way that degrades it, says DeVries. Uh, this DeVries chap is really busy with this article. If you like oatmeal for breakfast, buy the product that has only oats in it and nothing else. Don't be tempted or don't buy the oats. Buy something that's not going to make your blood sugar go through the ceiling. Don't be tempted by foods offered in a variety of fruity or other flavors. If you like fruit-flavored yogurt, buy plain yogurt and add your own fresh fruit. Many fruit-flavored yogurts contain not just fruit, but several other additives, such as cane sugar, cornstarch, natural flavors, which are not natural, and juice concentrates. Yogurt should have just two ingredients, milk and cultures. Okay. Number nine, could you make it in your kitchen? Good question. When in doubt, look at the ingredient label and ask yourself whether you could make it at home. 
Ultra-processed foods contain additives that are not typically used in home kitchens. They are often transformed into textures and shapes not found in nature. Things like frosted cereals, donuts, hot dogs, and chicken nuggets. So, could you make it in your kitchen? This is a good test. Could you make it in your kitchen? Well, I know that um, I don't have it on hand at the moment, but it's easy enough for me to go down to the local supermarket and buy a tin of carboxy methyl cellulose, and then I'm set. I can make all the donuts and French fries and hot dogs and, and junk that is possible. Look, guys, keep it simple. You don't have to worry about nutrition labels. You don't have to worry about how many ingredients are in there. You don't have to worry about how much you eat in a day. You don't have to worry about calories. You don't have to worry about any of the nutrition stuff. You don't have to worry about macros. You don't have to worry about counting anything. Just focus on meat, fish, eggs, dairy if you can tolerate it. Cook in butter or lard or beef tallow. And 2024 is going to be so much healthier for you. And if you want to know how to get started with carnivore and stick to it in 2024, check out this video next.